Woohoo! Surf's up, dude! Cowabunga! Whew. Michelle, you're a bit late. Are you okay? Don't you remember we're supposed to film a video on chimatology today? Don't worry, Kayleen. I, I didn't forget. In fact, I actually went surfing just now because I wanted to research the waves. Because you know, chimatology is the study of wave motion. And let me tell you, the waves were radical today. Did you know that every 11 seconds a wave hits the shore? If you were to calculate how many waves hit the beach each year, it would be around 7,850 waves. And that's only taking into account one beach area. Just think about how many waves occur across all of the world's oceans. Wow, I didn't know you could surf, Michelle. And that's super cool you learned all of those things for today's video. As we mentioned earlier, today we will be discussing chimatology or the study of wave motion. How exactly are waves formed? And what causes waves to look so different from one another? Hmm. Well, it was pretty stormy out there today, so mm. maybe it has something to do with the wind? Like, you know how when on a windy day, you feel a force that like pushes you back, right? Maybe the same kind of thing happens when the ocean is forming waves? Hmm, that's a really good observation, Michelle. When the wind hits the ocean surface, it creates friction. And this friction can cause disturbances on the water's surface. And when strong enough, create those surging waves that you see on the beach. Scientists actually use something called the Beaufort scale to judge the state and effects of the wind on the waves, where a zero describes calm and flat ocean conditions with little to no wind, and a 12 represents the conditions of wind and waves during a massive hurricane. So the higher wind speeds are, the more surface waves there are in the ocean, and thus a higher ranking on the Beaufort scale. At a 12, surface waves become even more violent, turning into huge and swelling waves that even surfers can't handle. Wow, I didn't realize how much of an impact wind can have on wave formation. Hmm, I'm also thinking about how one wave that is moving could make another wave in front of it like bigger if it combines. Hmm, or maybe two waves colliding could make a smaller wave and then those waves could interact with other waves to make bigger or smaller waves with each other and then- Michelle! We could go on and on talking about how waves interact with each other, but we'd be here for days. But this never ending loop of logic actually reminded me that it does have some physics tied to it and it makes sense when you walk through it step by step. When it comes to waves and physics, two waves of different magnitudes do in fact collide with one another as we see in the ocean. More specifically, two waves of opposing but equal magnitudes can cancel one another out. But when the waves have differing magnitudes or energy in them, they can build into a larger wave or decrease the power of one another. If two waves combine with one another to create a larger wave than before, this is what we would call constructive interference. But if two waves that combine result in a smaller wave, what do you think that would be called? Hmm, maybe destructive interference? That's right. Oh, that makes sense. I guess when you think about the entire ocean, millions of waves are interacting with one another. And it's a wonder that when you look at the ocean that each wave looks different from one another. Exactly. It's amazing to think that each wave is the construct of so many different variables in the ocean. And even waves themselves interact with one another and change how they behave and look. The Christian marvels at the waves and how they are intricately formed because in each and every part of the world, waves demonstrate the careful design of God. From scripture, we can see that God is the one who controls all things, including waves. God commands the swells and stills of the sea when they are to rise and when they fall. Psalm 89 verses 8 to 9 perfectly captures God's sovereignty in the ocean, and that says, O Lord God of hosts, who is like you, O mighty Lord? Your faithfulness also surrounds you. You rule the swelling of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. 
sailors, pirates, mariners, explorers, and even cruise ships really get to see God's sovereignty and power on display in seeing the many waves on the ocean. As it says in Psalm 107, 23 to 25, those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they have seen the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he spoke and raised up a stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. But we don't have to go out to sea to see God's amazing power and design of waves. We can marvel in the waves that we see at the beach, or we can make our own. All you would need is a big tub and a lot of water. Well, that's all the time we have for today, but we hope that you enjoyed learning about chymatology with us today. And feel free to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for the newest content. And remember, creation is cool, but our creator is even cooler. We'll see you next time. Check out our other creation is cool videos here.